Hi folks, welcome. And in this video, I want to show you the hardware aspect of this muffling for OpenTX project of mine. And you can see here my Jumper T16. And as telemetry unit, I'm using the SIG type uh, radius. And what I'm going to show you now is how I connected this uh, telemetry unit to my Jumper T16. And the first thing I really want to stress is that this is just the example of how I did it. Uh, so this is not the only way of doing it. There are plenty of ways. The situation can be very different for your case. You might use a Dragon link and whatever, and then things are just, just different. Uh, so this is just my example of how I did it, which I want to show you. And it's I'm not saying that this is the only way of doing it or even the best way of doing it. So please uh, look at your own situation and uh, find your best way. Okay, so but what do we have to do? And for that, I've prepared this uh, scheme here. So we have a drone, a telemetry unit connected via USB to a laptop or PC or whatever as a ground control station. And what we want to do now is that we replace this ground control station with our jumper T16. So therefore we have our drone, our telemetry unit. So that's the parts which you have available already. And now we are taking the UART port of the telemetry unit that is the RX and TX wires and of course ground and connect these three wires to our jumper T16. So the good message here is that the jumper T16 has plenty of pins which are available for this purpose. The bad message is that none of this pin are exposed to the outside and none of these pins are easily accessible. So what we need to do is to open this jumper T16 and solder these three wires directly to the main board of the jumper T16. Okay. Um, for our uh, transmitters, this might be very different. For example, I think the Horus has an extra UART port. Um, also the upcoming Radio Master TX16S or how it's called, I think has UART por ports exposed. So that for these transmitters, you don't need to do anything of what I'm showing here. It's, it should be very simple. But for the Jumper T16, that's what you need to do. So now in addition, uh, this, uh, this telemetry unit, of course, needs to get some power. And here again, the situation might be very, very different for your case. You also might have different preferences and so on and so forth. So you are going just to see what I did. And what I did is that I soldered some additional two wires to the main board in order to get access to the battery and then took a 5 volt switching regulator here as a to power uh, the, 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 to power the thick radio. And um, so that's what you see here, the three wires for the UART port, RX, TX and ground, and then there's two wires here. And this probably can be also replaced here. One could probably take the power directly from the module bay or find the point of 5 volt in the transmitter. Um, but I just wanted to take the power directly from the battery and, and, and just to... I, it makes me feel safer. So this is what you can see from the outside. Huh? And you also can see I didn't want it to drill some holes. So therefore I took uh, this hole here. Huh? And uh, as hardware pieces which you need to do this conversion is just this sort of servo wires. Huh? And uh, so I buy them from Hobby King. They are very cheap. I don't know, this package is maybe $5 or something like this. So it's really, really cheap. And I use the servo wires, the thin ones, so not the thicker ones. And the reason is obvious because I want to get the wires through this hole here. And also they need to be of sufficient length. Uh, so this is, the, this, is a, this is a proper length. Uh, so, but this is really all what you need hardware-wise uh, in order to do this uh, modification. Now what I'm going to show you next is how to open this transmitter and then to show you inside uh, where to find the solder points and what, what, what I did with soldering. Now the opening of a transmitter goes as follows. You probably have seen plenty of videos showing this. You, you take off these rubber parts. Okay. And then there are a couple of screws. There's a screw here, there's a screw here, there's a screw here, there's a screw here, there's a screw uh, here on the top, there's a screw also uh, here. And then there are also two screws here, here and here. And you actually should not forget these two screws because it's important to get them off. Uh, so I will do this now and then in a second we will see us with the thing uh, opened.
So I've opened the jumper and I'm not going to desolder the things here, so you, you will understand this. So here we have our uh, UART port wire, here we have our the, the, the power wire, and as uh, points uh, which can be used, we are, as I said, there are plenty of points which one can use. Here are the pins for the so-called UART3 port. One also could use uh, these pins here of the Bluetooth uh, part. There are also some pins here and here, which one could use uh, available. So what I've decided is that I'm going to use now with these pins here. Um, if you consider or find that the other pins, for example, of the Bluetooth uh, area would be more convenient or easier to solder to or something like this, so then please tell me and I will then modify the firmware to make this possible or if you prefer these pins or something like this. Um, so that's all possible. So I just decided now to use these pins here. So what's, what you need to do is um, you need to get your wire and obviously you need to solder this here to the proper locations. And if you get the order incorrect, so I've just took it simple in the, in, in the order of how the wires are coming because then the soldering is easy. So this is no problem because at the end you always can, uh, when, when, when you take here the ends of the servo wires, and put them into this, uh, this this header here. You easily can change the order so that, that it's getting the correct order. So don't worry about that. And um, one thing which is important: take long enough cables, and especially make this knot in here. Uh, so this I think is really important because this is kind of a, a, a release. So that when you pull on the string here, when you pull on this wire here, you're not pulling on this piece of the wire. Okay. So I, I think this is um, this the simple knot here is important. Now this is uh, the UART wire, and then as regards of the power wire, um, this is a bit, uh, one has to be uh, look around a bit more. As I said, there, there can be plenty of options from probably you can use the pins uh, from, from this external module bay. Um, one also can just take it directly from the power plug. However, this has the inconvenience that the uh, 3D, uh, the, the, the SIG radio would be powered all the time, so you would have a need an additional plug. So therefore I try to find the location where the, where also the switch of the jumper is effective already, so after the first switching FET, and that's the location which I spotted, It's I found it the most easiest one, so it's on this, this capacitor, uh, so you have to solder the plus, or I, I soldered the wire, the plus wire to this capacitor here and to get the power. Okay, so this is uh, what one needs to do. I'm not sure if you consider this difficult or not. This, I think, depends really very much on your solder skills. So if, if you're not very experienced with soldering, then of course it might be a very difficult job. Um, but if if you have done some soldering, soldering or so I, I would think that everyone who's using uh, beta flight or this sort of this, this 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 type of flight controllers where you have the small pins should have not much difficulty with, with doing this uh, solder job here. Okay, so now I'm going to reassemble this, and you have seen that I took off uh, this this parts here from the ends of the wires, and this is obviously to get them to get them here through this thing, and that's then all that one needs to do. Oops. So this is the one wire and the second wire. Yeah, and now I'm going to reassemble the thing and we'll make a test. So, okay. Yeah, see you in a second. Oh, um, there's one point I should tell you before I reassemble, namely when you do all this thing opening and closing and so on and so forth, that you should be careful with your with this ribbon wires here. And I actually had the case that suddenly my my slider wasn't working anymore, and it turned out that everything that happened that that just the ribbon wires apparently got very just a tiny little bit dislocated. Uh, so I, I couldn't see anything, so it looked, visually it looked perfectly fine, uh, but it wasn't working. So I just had to relocate this, uh, reinsert this ribbon wires and then everything was fine again. So the message is, be careful when, when you rip on it, on, on, on it, uh, 
they are they are more fragile uh, than, than than they look like. Okay, so but if you experience such a thing, don't worry. It's probably just that uh, some of your uh, ribbon wires got a bit dislocated. Okay, now I continue with reassemble. Now everything is reassembled. Just let me check that all is still working. Welcome to OpenTX. So this looks good. Switch warning. Oh, there's a switch on there. Here, this one. Okay. And uh, the secret is also working. Okay. See you next.